Beat Podcast Live Edition. Alex Barth, Evan Lazar here as always. And Alex, we got a big day of trades and shakeups in the NFL draft order. The San Francisco 49ers have traded with the Miami Dolphins to move up to number three in the NFL draft. Dolphins went down to 12 for a hot minute. Then they traded back up to number six for the Philadelphia Eagles. So just resetting the stage now, the top of the draft, we have the Jaguars at one. Obviously, the Jets at two, and now the San Francisco 49ers at three. Miami will now pick six, and Philadelphia will now pick 12. So a lot of moving and shaking going on. Uh, these are always fun when they make these trades before the draft even starts and weeks before. It's not yeah, super it's, rare. Uh, yeah, super rare, but also there are some precedent. You know, uh, the Rams did it with Jared Goff. I think the Eagles that year did the same thing with the Carson Wentz deal. So there, there has been some precedent for it in the past. But I think the main questions that we have to ask here first are, let's start with the Jimmy Garoppolo discussion, because I think that that from a Patriots perspective, that we can get into some of the trades and what the trade uh, evaluation actually is in terms of if the Patriots would give up that much in a trade to get something back like the number three pick like San Francisco did. But with Jimmy G first, I think both you and I, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, are already on the record multiple times that this is not our, our number one choice here. This no, is not I wanted our- I wanted Jacoby over yeah. Jimmy. It was just an uh, ob- objective. I mean, that was my big one. Exactly. Like this is not something that we are advocating for the Patriots to do necessarily, but the facts are what the facts are. We know Bill Belichick's relationship with Jimmy Garoppolo was a good one. We know that the Patriots are very high on Jimmy Garoppolo as a quarterback back and before they traded him to San Francisco in the first place. A lot has happened since then. A lot of injuries on Jimmy's side has happened since then. I think the biggest thing with Garoppolo outside of the injuries is that the Patriots are going to have to do something with his contract. He's got a $25 million cap hit for the team that acquires him via trade. The Patriots only have a shade under $12 million in cap space, according to Miguel Benzon, Pat's cap. So the Patriots right now, as things stand, can't fit Jimmy Garoppolo under the cap if they acquire him via trade. So he's going to have to rework his deal in order to lower that cap number for a team acquiring him so to make him more tradable. So in a lot of ways, I feel like that's the next domino that could fall here for Jimmy's perspective. I think it's obvious why Jimmy might want out of San Francisco. I'd also heard that he has sort of distanced himself a little bit from the organization. Every single Yeah, every single year they do a thing down in uh, this year is supposed to be in Nashville where the receiver is similar to what the Patriots are doing out west in California right now. George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, all those guys get together for a passing camp. And Jimmy was isn't supposed to attend this year because of re, you know the reasons that he doesn't feel like the organization is really committed to him. He doesn't really feel like he's their guy. And I think that that's pretty obvious that he's not their guy at this point. So first questions first, does this put the Jimmy G thing even more on our radar? Are we even more of the belief now that the Patriots could acquire Jimmy G via trade to bring him back to New England? I, I think it absolutely puts him on the radar. However that happens, we'll see. But And now you have the reports, a couple people saying that San Francisco did this. They moved up to three to get Mac Jones because they want the most NFL-ready quarterback. And they'll pass on Trey Lance, and they'll pass on Justin Fields on that upside. They have a roster they like. They want a conductor. At that point, I don't know why you don't just stick with Jimmy Garoppolo. I think Jimmy Garoppolo right now and Mac Jones right now are are pretty close. But – they made the move and here we are Garoppolo is going to have to restructure his contract. That's a big hurdle. And then does San Francisco just release him? There's not a ton of dead money. Does San Francisco just let him go? And then I think you're really looking at a scenario where new England's likely the trade. Obviously they'll have to compete. I don't know who else wants him. He has a, a no trade clause in there. So that could go a couple of different ways, but you know, and, and we'll get into it in a little bit. The options, right, because they're going to add somebody, right? We've known this. Cam and Stidham aren't going to be the only two guys. There's going to be somebody else. The options for them to trade up right now are slim to none. Correct. Brian Flores, with these two trades Miami did, basically choked out any opportunity the Patriots had unless they want to get bananas aggressive. So, yeah, I think you have to look at Jimmy Garoppolo now as being the plan because if you look beyond the trades, you look beyond Garoppolo – there's not a ton of other opportunities out there for them. Exactly. That's the way that I'm looking at it as well. And I find it really hard to believe. So San Francisco is saying right now through Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter, and this could just be bartering to kind of get a 
trace and more trace. It's not could, it is. It is. Yeah, in, in Garoppolo. And that's kind of what I had heard is that the Niners, I, I reported a couple weeks ago, the Patriots had called the 49ers asking about Jimmy Garoppolo. They had said that they are not moving Jimmy G. They are kind of steadfast on that. The behind the scenes read between the lines take was that they weren't going to move Jimmy G until they had a better option in hand to make that trade happen. Now, Ian Rappaport and Adam Schefter are saying that the Niners are planning on keeping Jimmy G as sort of the bridge quarterback to next year because they have a guy in mind in the draft and they don't want to throw that guy right into the fire. All that's all well and good, but you have a $25 million bridge quarterback. I mean, that's not that's not the idea, right? That's not right. that's not usually the typical bridge. The bridge is Cam Newton on a one-year contract at $5 million. That's a bridge. Right, not a, a Jimmy G bridge at 25 million. So, from the 49ers' perspective, I don't really understand uh, why they would say that Jimmy G is this bridge guy that they want to hang on to. So, maybe they just haven't gotten a trade offer that's made it worth their while yet to move Jimmy G. So, that sort of brings into the question what is Jimmy G worth? And would you do it if you were the Patriots? I would say somewhere around a third or a fourth round pick when you factor into the contract as well, maybe even lower. And maybe the Niners just don't feel like that's worth it. You know, the asset coming in is not worth just getting uh, anything back for Garoppolo. I, I don't know. It it's a lot of sort of interesting conversations to have. But I, I think that there's a lot to be said for Jimmy G's style of play in the Patriots offense, the quick release, the sound throwing mechanics for the most part, very accurate within 15, 20 yards, of the line of scrimmage. We all know he's got limited upside. He's got limited playmaking ability outside the pocket, limited downfield throwing, but that's not necessarily what the Patriots need to be, right? They need somebody that's going to throw accurately, quickly, on time passes. And that's certainly things that Jimmy G has always been able to do when healthy. And lastly, uh, Jimmy G, what, wait, where, wait, I think we have to discuss the guy in the chat who just said I look like Jimmy Garoppolo. Do you think you look like I don't think you look like Jimmy? I didn't think I look like Jimmy Garoppolo, but I'll take that. I, I don't I if I think if I said ask Jess if you look like Jimmy Garoppolo, she'd laugh in my face. I, I I'm just gonna take the compliment and I think everything the chat says is true all the time, obviously. So yeah, I'll take that. Hell yeah. Okay, all right, go well, ahead, make your point. <laughs> I just have to point that out. I don't get compliments like that all the time. I have okay, to point that out. That's, that's fair. All right, so let's put number. Let's put a third round pick on the table for Jimmy G. Are you doing that one? So that's the Brady pick. That is the Brady pick. That How would interesting be, would that be? That'd be tough. I don't know. Okay, so let's put let's put a fourth round. So, pick. No, no, no. We, I, I, I get what you're saying. Look, maybe they maybe they trade down and pick up a third. Like it doesn't. Yeah, they're not going to trade ninety six straight up for Jimmy G. So that it, well, it's, it's, they always kind of do the last thing we're expecting, right? Um, I will only do it if he restructures his contract. Oh, I'm he's, not got being it. Jimmy. he's got it. Right. But like, not just to the wire because, right. and I've said this before, like maybe like cams your backup, but I'm not, I'm not done a quarterback. Also, what, let me pull up Garoppolo's contract here. What's the years. So there's only one year left. It's a 25. Are you sure? Year. I thought it was two. It's one year. I believe it's one no, year. It's left. two. It's two years. Well, well, the next year must not be much guaranteed or something like that. Maybe uh, it's a $27 million cap hit next year. Okay, but there's how only much? there's only 1.4 million in dead cap. So if you let him go, right. you save 25 million. But but it's this, it's the same thing this year. So I just that that cap hit's got to come down by by more than half because yes. I still need room to operate. You know, I got to go into free agency next year, maybe to be at maybe add another wide receiver. I don't know what the deal is at tackle, and both the tackles are on one year deals, and maybe that gets solved in the draft. But I'm um, you know I'm restructuring that deal big time Garoppolo. If he's coming to new England, he's getting out of a bad situation, a place he doesn't want to be a, a, a team that doesn't want him. Right. If I'm bill Belichick, I'm coming into this is I am saving you, Jimmy. I am saving you from Kyle Shanahan right. and the San Francisco 49ers. I like you will take my contract. If you want to get on this life raft and rescue your career. Like that's what I'm doing. If I'm Belichick, that cap hits getting down about $10 million. If that, if I'm bill Belichick, so um, that's the, the the problem for Jimmy G is, and again, I, like I said at the beginning of the stream, Jimmy G wants out of San Francisco. I, I actually really I don't blame him. So, and I don't blame him either. And it it came before this trade up to number three, and I think this is just going to solidify it. He has already felt like the Niners have given up on him, right? They, they, he's already felt like he's not their guy. He's not in their plans long term, and they have given up on him as a quarterback. So 
I feel like he want, is going to want out of San Francisco here really shortly, if not already. He's probably already on the phone with John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan right now saying, trade me. The problem is, is that nobody wants that contract. Nobody does. And nobody can fit that contract under the cap. So really, the only choice that Jimmy G has at this point, I think, is doing what Marcus Mariota just did with the Raiders, where he restructures his deal, lowers his cap number. He has that no trade clause already built in, and you make yourself easier to trade right? Because you're, you want to get out of there. They, I, it doesn't sound like the Niners are just going to cut him, but I think that they want, he wants out. They aren't looking at him as a long-term answer. So I think that they need to restructure his deal now and make him more tradable. And I think that then we can get into the conversation. The other thing is a lot of people in the chat have also mentioned that Jimmy G sucks and all this kind of stuff. Jimmy G's always hurt. All right. But when he's not hurt, he's a good quarterback. Is he a great quarterback? No. But he's an average, above average NFL quarterback that has a winning record around a good team and all that kind of stuff. I think this notion that and this is where, and by the way, is a little strong. And that's where Cam Newton comes in, right? Because if you only need four or five good games from Cam Newton, he can give you that. Cam Newton is, for all we've said about him, might be the best backup quarterback in the league. Yeah, he's definitely in the top three. So that's where you know. If you have Garoppolo, we've talked about needing to have a strong backup. That would be Cam. I understand. You know, when we went into this, when we started this offseason, the two names I said I didn't want to talk about, Cam Newton and Jimmy Garoppolo. That's and then Jared Stidham was the third. Right. And there's a real chance that's going to be their quarterback room. Yeah. So yeah, he, here we are. But yeah, Garoppolo with this offense, I've been talking about this for two years now. I think the, the, the model to build after is not the Kansas City Chiefs because there's just, you can't do that. Right, you can't just because it all hinges on Mahomes, and you can't just go get Patrick Mahomes. Right, the model to build on is San Francisco and Tennessee, and those teams that are just talented up and down the roster, one to fifty-three, in the net neutral quarterback who's not going to win you games, but he's not going to lose you games. You let the other guys on your roster go win you games. The Patriots, with the signing of the two tight ends and the additions they've made on defense, they're now built a lot like that San Francisco team. Yeah. Garoppolo can be your net neutral and we know he can get that sort of team to the Super Bowl because not only did he do it he did it going through Aaron Rodgers and he did it going through Russell Wilson yeah. so I'm not like over the top about Garoppolo I was hoping this offseason was going to end with Trey Lance or Mac Jones but there's a lot like there if they end up with Garoppolo they are a lot better off at quarterback week one 2021 than they were in 2020 yeah I agree and Jimmy that's a big thing if he can stay on the field, when he was on the field in 2019, he had a very good season for the 49ers. Was yep. a lot of that the scheme? Was a lot of that George Kittle and, and Debo Samuel and the playmakers? Absolutely. But the point is, is that his production was good. His tape was pretty good. And the things that he does well, getting the ball out quickly, beating the blitz, throwing to the middle of the field on time with precision and accuracy and anticipation – these are why the Patriots liked him in the draft. This is why the Patriots drafted him in the second round, which is still, to date, the highest Bill Belichick has ever drafted a quarterback as the head coach of the Patriots. So there's reasons why the Patriots have loved Jimmy Garoppolo in the past, and I just think that this notion that he is now trash because he's always injured, he's always injured. He's not trash, right? Well, you yeah. can, I mean, you can tie those in. You could not be excited about Garoppolo as your quarterback I'm not because you're worried about, about the injury. I'm just saying on, when he right. is on the field, he is not a trash quarterback. Just, you got to separate. The, you, you do have to right. separate those two. And, and the injuries are absolutely concerned, but look, that's, I think, a large reason of what's driving him out of San Francisco. Yeah. Again, they got to the Super Bowl with him two years ago when he has, you know, even if you're picking in the top three, drafting quarterbacks is incredibly risky. But so is trusting Garoppolo to stay healthy. So this is the risk San Francisco would rather take. I agree. I think it's the better risk. But there's an there's inherent risk here. It is what it is. If Garoppolo Garoppolo wouldn't be available if he could stay healthy. If he could stay healthy, the Niners wouldn't be trading up here. The Niners probably would have been back, you know, deep in the playoffs last year. So. Right. So it's a really interesting domino effect here. None of this actually has anything to do directly with the Patriots. Yet here we are yeah. talking about it. Yeah. Yet. Yet, it, it none of it directly has to do with the Patriots yet, and here we can talk about a million different ways that it affects the Patriots. So that certainly tells you a lot about how this went down today. Again, the 49ers moving up to number three, the Dolphins moving around the board and ending at number six. So that's the new draft order. That